A cordial greeting. Today is Saturday, August 23, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In today's video I will be giving an update on Invest 90 which is projected to become the next tropical storm of the season, which would be named Tropical Storm Fernand. I will also talk about Invest 99 which has a low probability of tropical cyclone development. As it moves west, this disturbance should bring heavy showers to the southern half of the Lesser Antilles between Sunday and Monday. And in the long term we will be watching it as it moves over the Caribbean Sea because eventually, depending on which track it takes, it may have some chance of tropical cyclone development in the Western Caribbean Sea. Let's zoom in on the infrared satellite image of Invest 90. You can see that it continues generating strong thunderstorms near the circulation center and is close to being classified as a tropical depression or tropical storm. And that is why at 8 a.m. the National Hurricane Center indicates that there is almost a 100% probability of tropical cyclone development, which means it is very likely that during today it will be classified as a tropical depression or tropical storm for Nand. You can see that the area of possible development extends east of Bermuda, while the track models, all of them, keep a fairly safe distance from Bermuda. Although some showers, some wind gusts, and indirect effects may be felt during the next 48 hours. Eventually, as it moves north-northeast over open Atlantic waters, it is projected that after strengthening into perhaps a weak or moderate tropical storm, it will begin to weaken rapidly in about four days, and eventually dissipate without having significant effects over land areas. So now, let's move on to talk about Invest 99. If we zoom in on the infrared satellite animation, we can see that although it has good rotation, it lacks a closed circulation at low levels of the atmosphere. But despite this, it is generating some thunderstorms over the axis of the wave, and this will be the rain that will move westward during the coming days, bringing some heavy showers between Sunday and Monday for the southern Lesser Antilles. During the last 24 hours, the National Hurricane Center has continued decreasing the probabilities of tropical cyclone development, just as projected. However, you can see that there still exists a low probability that a tropical depression or weak, short-lived tropical storm may form during the next 48 hours as it approaches the southern Lesser Antilles. This probability of development remains low, particularly because a lot of dry air is located around the axis of the wave, making it very difficult for it to develop strong thunderstorms, which would be necessary for it to achieve any type of tropical organization. So the development opportunity of Invest 99 will continue decreasing as it approaches the Caribbean. Even so, see the rainfall accumulation projection from the American model between Sunday and Monday. It projects some rainfall accumulations that should be between 75 to 100 millimeters affecting the southern half of the Lesser Antilles. So this can cause some localized flooding and some wind gusts between 30 to 35 miles per hour may affect these islands. Now, it is important that residents of this area continue to be attentive to any unexpected change in the forecast of Invest 99. However, in the worst-case scenario it could pass as a tropical depression or weak tropical storm. Then, in the medium and long term, you can see that it is projected to continue generally westward, while staying over Caribbean sea waters south of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. And as it crosses the eastern and central Caribbean Sea, conditions will not be favorable for tropical cyclone development, as shown by the intensity models, where the great majority of them keep the disturbance weak without becoming a tropical storm. This is totally normal especially in areas of the Central and Eastern Caribbean Sea, where historically we have seen that systems which have not formed into tropical cyclones before reaching this region have significant difficulties for strengthening and organization because winds tend to accelerate through this region and create subsidence conditions, which are not favorable for tropical cyclone formation. In fact, this area is known as the graveyard of cyclones, where historically it has been very difficult for tropical depressions to form south of Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and northern Venezuela. So for this reason the Global Models and the National Hurricane Center do not project development south of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. However, it is important that we stay attentive to the evolution of this disturbance, especially when it reaches the Western Caribbean Sea, because it could find more favorable conditions for tropical cyclone development. But everything will depend on which track it takes. If it continues westward until reaching Nicaragua and Honduras, this would limit its tropical development potential. However, if it manages to maintain a track a little more toward the northwest, it could find marginally favorable conditions north of Honduras and east of Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula. However, this is already a long-term forecast and we will have to wait calmly because it will be 7 to 8 days before it reaches this area. In addition, the majority of global models do not show significant development. But let's briefly look at the ensemble members of the American model. Some of them develop perhaps a tropical depression before reaching the Lesser Antilles, but all of them keep it weak or dissipate it when it crosses over the Central and Eastern Caribbean Sea. Then, in about 7 to 8 days, 
some members show possible development in the Western Caribbean, particularly those that keep that more west-northwestward track. Meanwhile, on the other hand, the ensemble members of the European model, although about 20 to 30 percent of them develop a tropical depression as it approaches the Eastern Caribbean Sea, all of them dissipate it south of the Dominican Republic and keep a track until reaching Central America without leaving opportunities for tropical development. So that is all for the update on tropical conditions. We will continue monitoring these two disturbances, although it seems they will not cause major inconveniences. And remember that, as I explained in the previous video, the Atlantic will have conditions that will not be very favorable for development during the next 10 to 15 days. Even so, remember that we are in the peak of the season and it is always important to stay attentive to any tropical development. Also, I wanted to preview that the Eastern Pacific area may become quite active during the coming weeks, and for this I will be recording another video during this weekend to talk about what could be the future tracks of cyclones forming south and west of Mexico. Well, with this I say goodbye. But before leaving I wanted to invite you to like this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you receive notifications when I record new videos. I hope you all have an excellent weekend. See you later.